Hey guys, Mike here. So what we're doing in this video is we're pouring a concrete floor addition onto an existing foundation already. We did the floor in this basement. That blue tarp is uh, actually covering the plywood deck to a new house. And we already did a, a basement floor in that about a month ago. So there's an eight foot wall there with a basement. And now we're just doing an addition onto that. And I'm showing you how we're pouring the concrete floor onto the addition. Now this is a post and beam house, so it's got these metal straps sticking up, like in the picture there to the right. You can see the red arrow showing that metal strap. This this addition has those metal straps in it. Also, you'll see around the outside edges that we got to work around. Another good thing about this video is you'll see how we have to work around all these other things: these pipes, the plumbing sticking up, the styrofoam boxes, which are actually shower units that are going to be there eventually and then the red and the, and the blue pipes they are hot and cold water and then there's a bunch of you know we're pouring on top of uh, radiant heat so we, we got two inches of styrofoam down under here with wire mesh on that and then the radiant heat tied to that and the radiant heat guys up here they like to keep that stuff right on the bottom they don't like us pulling it up into the concrete so we just leave it right on top of the styrofoam right where they want it and we use fiber mesh in the concrete for reinforcement so we're pouring what amounts to about a five inch thick floor with fiber mesh 3500 psi with three quarter inch stone in it and like in all my other videos i'm using a mid-range water reducer so we can pour a pretty loose slump here without affecting the, the strength of the concrete but as you can see, I'm having to go around all that stuff over there to the right. I'm mag floating around that. And we didn't set up the forms on this either. So what, what the builder did was he hired uh, an excavation guy to come in and dig, dig the trenches around this, dig the dirt out four feet. And then the foundation people, the guy that does the concrete walls, came in and did a footing. And then they put that four foot, what we call a four foot frost wall on top of the footing. And then what the builder did was he formed up that, he's got that little form there on top of the concrete wall. And we're just pouring inside that form. He didn't even, he didn't even set it to grade. As you can see over there on the other side, we're about an inch below the top of it. Now it would have made it a lot easier for us if he just set it right to grade. But what we did was we used a laser like I'm using right now to shoot a wet pad. I went around with a laser and I made a bunch of marks and we snapped the chalk line down inside it about an inch. And what we're trying to do with the height of the concrete floor is we're matching, we're matching this blue, what amounts to this blue tarp here, which is right over the, the plywood deck. So we're matching the, the height of the plywood deck on the main floor of the house with this concrete floor. And then they're going to keep the concrete floor over there as you know part of their finished floor so they may end up polishing it they may end up just sealing it the way it is but we're going to power trial it nice and smooth here today for them so now what darren's doing is, is he's using that the wet pads i'm making with a laser so he can strike them off and give himself a wet pad to go by by those pipes and now you can see him turn and use he's got an eight foot screed there and he's going to get in between all those pipes and boxes and stuff like that and get that screeded out nice and flat and that's how we do that i mean it's it's kind of a small area so we don't definitely don't use our our power screed over here and it's just easier to screed it by hand like this with one guy and then when we get into a bigger area like we are over here we'll use the 12 foot screed and then two guys will get on that, and you can see how they kick screed that. Now they're just going to turn it and come out. There was a big grade beam in this too, right where all those white pipes are. That was about a foot thick right there, so that's going to end up being a, a load-bearing wall inside the house. That's why they thicken that area up so much. You can see how Luke and Eric screed that concrete there together. They, all they need to worry about is, you know, scoring there on the outside of the screed while I'm kind of raking the concrete for them. And then now Darren's going to bolt float it, get it nice and smooth. 
How many of you guys out there have a post and beam house or or light post and beam construction? I mean, it is. There's a lot of them here in Maine, um, especially a lot of cabins that are built that way up here on lakes. But it's definitely a different type of construction versus regular stick built homes. We we'll probably do I don't know, twenty or thirty jobs a year that are going to be post and beam like this. Some big, some small, some barns, some houses. It's all different. Yeah, you can see one of those metal straps right there on that corner. They're pushing the concrete right there. So they fasten that right to the outside of the beam on the outside of the building and then that all gets covered up by whatever they use for siding out there. You can see I gotta go over one right there. There's a bunch of different types of ways to do post and beam, but this is probably one of the more popular ones that we see up this way. So the reason they did a foundation, a four foot frost wall under this is because they're connecting it to an uh, existing foundation that goes down in the ground eight feet. That way, you know, the frost gets, gets down about 40 to 48 inches here in Maine, so they put the frost wall down with the footing, it ends up being about five feet below subgrade. And the frost doesn't get below that, so nothing will move after everything's all built and backfilled and then landscaped. The frost will never get up under that footing and, and lift anything. That's why they do an addition like that. We would never just put it like a, a slab on grade addition onto an existing foundation up here. Especially if they're, you're tying in a roof line or something like that. It's just, there's too much of a risk of the, the part where the slab on grade is that might move up or down with the frost. So we always do a, a four foot frost wall addition. Unless they want a full basement under it, then they could have done an eight foot wall, but that would have been a lot more expensive. Now that's basically how we do additions up here. So if you guys if you guys like concrete, you know, I come up with a couple video videos a week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. If you like these kind of videos, please hit the like button. Share these with anybody you can on your social media. I've also got what I call a, a uh, concrete training academy down in the description, guys, if you want to learn how to do concrete like I do. You know, you can check out, it's called the Concrete Underground. Check that out down there in the description. Hit that link, it'll take you to the page that describes everything we do in there and, and how I can help teach you how to do concrete. And that's basically what we do, guys. So, again, thanks for watching. Come on back, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.